Well, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're so excited to have another special live stream of Let Us Reason. And with us here, uh, no other than AP, known as the Apostate Prophet. And uh, many of you have seen him in his own, uh, of course, uh, work and channel. But recently, of course, with David Wood, have been uh, doing uh, a uh, debate, I guess. And, and we can talk about that here in the show. But all that to say is we are uh, thankful that his time uh, permits him to uh, be with us. And uh, we appreciate the fact that uh, he's willing really to be on uh, uh, different channels, including ours. And uh, we want to just give him the opportunity to share uh, with us about his own journey out of Islam. And uh, with that in mind, I want to thank everyone who's joining us right now. Hopefully, um, uh, you will find this particular show to be exciting and interesting. And obviously, uh, we want to thank our moderators uh, for the wonderful work they do. And everyone, please, if you have any specific question, keep it focused on the topic. Uh, and you know me, folks. If I see anyone who's coming here just to waste time, I'll use my magic finger and I will block you. And that's how <laughs> things will go. With that in mind, AP, welcome and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thanks for organizing this. It's really a pleasure. It's an honor to uh, be here. We wanted to talk for quite a while now. Uh, I know, you know, yeah. it's, it's, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, AP, you know, let's just assume, you know, there are people here uh, that really weren't aware of uh, what you do, never heard of you. Let's just assume, hypothetically speaking, why don't you go ahead and give us, you know, just a little bit brief background about your upbringing. Where, where were you, you know, raised, if you feel comfortable sharing names and locations, of course, and, uh -huh. and how were you raised and so on and so forth. Sure. Uh, I just want to say quickly, um, there is very heavy storm here. I don't know if it will uh, affect my connection here. The light just blinked a little bit. Just so you know, if I suddenly disappear, that's probably it. No <laughs> I, I hope nothing happens. Um, yeah, uh, so my, my name is Rudvan van Eidemir. Uh, people usually know me as uh, apostate prophet. That's how I made things popular. Um, I am a former Muslim. I grew up in um, Germany mostly. I was born in Germany to a Turkish uh, Muslim family, to a uh, Sunni family that uh, has uh, that 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 follows certain Sufi practices, and um, I was born in germany grew up in germany lived there for uh, quite a while and around the age of 16 or so uh my parents uh decided that we should move to um move to turkey so we did that we moved to turkey together i tried to live there tried to get used to the environment became a little bit closer with uh a muslim way of living because of my parents um at some point in Turkey, I, I went through, you know, my, my late youth, I went through some journeys, tried to really find myself, tried to find uh, where I belong, what I really uh, want to identify with. Um, I recently shared uh, something happened around 2009, 2010. Uh, I had an aunt who was very close to me and she, um, she was killed by her uh, then husband that uh, whom sh who she tried to... Uh, whom she tried to separate herself from and to divorce from. And uh, that kind of, and I was very close to her and that kind of uh, catapulted me into um, going more into things that I used to talk about with her. And we used to talk about uh, religion sometimes. She was a very free spirited woman. I admired that a lot. And uh, we were we were talking toward the end of her life about uh, religious lives, becoming religious, finding meaning and stuff like that. Uh, she was killed. It was very tragic. And not long after, I started turning toward religion for some strange reason, probably connected to that. Um, and yeah, then I became very religious and uh, practiced Islam very strictly for several years. Also joined one of those uh, Sufi practices, uh, was part of that for a brief time, but otherwise also uh, kept uh, reading about uh, Islamic sources, Islamic books, uh, thoroughly day and night would pray would try to tell others about uh, my beliefs i started reading the quran and uh that gave me problems <laughs> when i read the quran it, it started raising certain uh problems certain questions in my in my head and i 
I, I gave it a I gave it a rest. I read the Quran again later on to confront those problems once more. I read it again later on, and eventually I uh, left Islam with all the questions in my head that I had for years. And yeah, that's a very brief summary of my journey. And afterwards, I came to America. I met my wife. I started doing this online, and so on. Uh, I'm sorry, of course, about your aunt. Uh, uh, that must have been really hard. And uh, we all have, uh, you know, wonderful people in our life, uh, regardless of the background, of course, and what they believe in. They still touch our life one way or another. Mm -hmm. I remember the death of my father, who never, by the way, left Islam or even embraced Christ. Uh, in my case, um, has always been hard on me. I mean, I always remember, um, you know, speaking of that. Not only he died, uh, but no one can tell me where he was buried you know how islam is you, they i don't know how it is in turkey of course or in other parts of uh, the islamic world but in saudi you you get buried under dirt and a piece of rock is put there no name no initials oh, nothing yeah. and that's it when i went to visit his grave no one can tell me where till this day i don't have closure uh, to at least know where my father was. so so it, it is hard for us no doubt about that so mm -hmm. tell me then, you know, you began to really feel troubled reading the, the Quran. So, so what happened next? I mean, uh, how, how did that journey unfold? Well, the thing is, um, I, I was kind of always between uh, the good stuff that I learned in, uh, in Germany where I grew up, you know, uh, whether it's uh, the rights, the social things, the science and all that, all the knowledge that I acquired in Germany. And uh, then I find myself in, in Islam, which uh, gives me a completely backward understanding of society, of, uh, of the world around us and all that. Uh, when I read the Quran, I stumbled upon so many parts of it that just made me think, I mean, I would understand if this was the word of Muhammad, <laughs> uh, but this is supposed to be the uh, eternal verbatim speech of Allah. And there are many things in there that I just simply that I that I can't really feel comfortable with, like uh, especially the science aspects and the treatment of uh, women and of uh, the, the, the the disbelievers, especially things about about science, to be very honest, bothered me uh, the most at those times. I even remember uh, it was Ramadan the, uh, one time and it was it was really hot uh, and I was walking outside. I was fasting and while I was fasting, going somewhere, walking quite a uh, quite a distance. I was thinking about um, a certain thing about the sky and uh, the sky being held up and not being able to fall down because Allah holds it or something like that if I don't uh, misremember this. But I, I was I kept thinking about this and I was trying to tell myself to just shut up, shut up, shut up. I don't understand. I don't know. You know, this is not for me to think about. I If, if I do not know, then it's just because of my, you know, my, my human uh, weakness, my incapability to understand this. And I tried to ask others. I tried to find questions for a very long time, but it just did not work. And there was a time where uh, I was in the military because I had to go to the military in Turkey um, where I thought to myself at some point that I need to find the courage and uh, allow myself to think because if Allah is truly the almighty creator who gave me this belief and this book to read, then w would he really blame me for uh, questioning and for going through with my questions, for allowing myself to indulge in those questions and trying to really find the true answer. I mean, I don't think he would blame me for doubting and for trying to find answers. And once I started going down that road, it was like it was inevitable that I would eventually uh, leave Islam. And I had a very specific moment where I told myself um, I was very, I was very certain, and I had a specific moment where I said, "I am no longer a Muslim. I don't believe in." Uh, Allah anymore. I don't believe in Islam anymore. I am not a Muslim. And then that was it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was it with Islam. <laughs> so uh, did you share that right away with uh, with others around you, like family members, or you kept it to yourself? I didn't, actually. I kept it for, to myself for a, for a very long time, which was kind of, um, it is, it, it is uh, stressful. <laughs> it is uh, a burden to keep that to yourself, but I did keep it to myself initially for a very long time. I don't, I don't exactly remember how long it took for me to open up about this stuff and to uh, tell other people. But I never told my parents until years later. They only uh, found out about my disbelief 
uh, two, two years ago or so. Uh, they of, they noticed, of course, that I have become apathetic about religion. That I do not pray anymore. That I don't. That I'm not interested in their practices anymore. It was inevitable for them to see that. But I kept uh, like whenever they would try to talk about this, I would uh, try to kind of evade the conversation. I would try to not talk about it. Try to be like, just don't 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 ask me these questions. Just let's talk about something else. And I would try to get away and. Uh, Initially, I only opened up to other people that I knew, and especially to to one person who was an atheist that I opened up to, and he was, uh, and he just shrugged it off and said, "What's so problematic about it? Just don't believe in it. It's fine. I don't believe in it." And I was like, and I and, and I thought to myself, "Wait, it's it's that easy." <laughs> I I remember that, but yeah, what it, it you, took a while. Yeah. yeah. What made, what made you think like it wasn't that easy? I mean, uh, uh, because I agree with you. Uh, I mean, just the very thought of leaving Islam was a nightmare for me. I mean, mm -hmm. just when I started to doubt, it's like, wow, so what's going to happen to me now? And uh, was I living a lie? And, and what about the people that I always convinced that Islam is the truth? I mean, did you start to question these kind of things? I mean... You know very well, I and mean, we learn from the very beginning of our lives, from a very, very young age. We are brought up with such fear that is incomparable to any other ideology, to any other religious belief. We are uh, indoctrinated with so much fear that uh, this is the absolute truth. You are never to doubt it. You are to believe it word for word. You are to follow it. You are never to question it. You are never to laugh about it. You are never to engage with other people who doubt it. You are to walk away from them. You are never to trust the disbelievers. The disbelievers want to lie to you. They want to pull you out of Islam because they're jealous. They will never like you unless you are one of them. And we you know we hear these things from the beginning of our lives again and again, over and over again. And then these graphic descriptions of, of, of what will happen to us if we just doubt if we just disbelieve that we will be uh brutally tortured and skinned and <laughs> i don't know it's un unspeakable stuff if we uh you know if, if, if we just question it if we don't believe and then there is muhammad's hadith who says uh that uh, satan comes with these questions and if he comes we should just say uh i seek refuge with allah and then stop thinking like he he directly encourages us to not think and of course, then there are the other factors that, such as that uh, Muslims in general have a very uh, bad view of people who don't believe in Islam, uh, and especially of people who left Islam. I learned in my religious time that leaving Islam is punishable by death, and that uh, people have very problematic views about this, even in a country like Turkey, for example, uh, which, which, comparable, which compared to other cultures, compared to other countries, is much softer because people in Turkey don't really understand Islam very very well. They're a mix of a very secular and a religious uh, culture, but still the danger is there. After I left Islam, I learned, uh, I, I heard somebody tell me uh, something like, um, I will cut off your head and throw it into the onto the, uh, the, 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 the Taksim square, which is the, the big square in Istanbul. And, <laughs> you know, these things just... Uh, made me keep it to myself. I never wanted to share it with my parents, of course, because my parents are very religious. They raised us in the hopes that we will be very religious. We will be very devout. They loved it when I was religious. And I thought they would be devastated if they hear that I don't believe. And they became devastated after they learned that I do not believe anymore, especially when they learned that I now openly speak against Islam. So it's just, I don't know, where do you stop? There is the danger, there is the fear, there is the 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 reactions from those who love you who will no longer love you and who will no longer show you any uh kindness and closeness after you leave islam there's just too much to it and i kind of took it all all into account at some point and started just going out there and now i see the consequences of it so many people that i know that i was close to in the past act like they don't know me anymore they don't <laughs> respond to me anymore uh it's 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 really strange how this controls and d d defines your life in such a terrible way yeah you know it's interesting you say this ap because um at least in in saudi i'm trying to make a comparison here uh, people are so religious and you can at least understand why they're so upset when you leave islam mm -hmm. but there are other parts of the world uh, the muslim world where people are just culturally muslim you know put it this way they're not denying islam but why would they get upset 
Is it a nationalistic thing? Is it an identity thing? Uh, why are they upset with you? I, I saw someone here, by the way, make a, 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 an obscene comment I removed, but uh, you can tell people are still upset. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there, there's, there's this, uh, this thing in Islam that uh, being a Muslim is not just a choice. It is not just a personal belief. It's not a relationship between you and Allah or between you and Islam and the Prophet. It is your uh, political identity. Islam is a, an entity. You are part of that entity if you are a Muslim. Uh, it is not up to you to simply choose to leave that. If you are a Muslim, then that means you are part of the Muslim nation because it is Muslims uh, against all the others. It is uh, disbelief is one nation, Islam is one nation. If you belong to the nation of Muslims, then you must stay there. If you leave, if you uh, speak against it, if you just doubt it, if you embarrass Muslims in public, then you have betrayed this uh, nation. You have betrayed your identity. You have betrayed this big political entity. Leaving Islam does not simply mean no longer believing in Islam and uh, turning your back on, on Allah. Leaving Islam means betraying uh, yourself, betraying your family, betraying your friends, your community, betraying the, all the Muslims all around the world. World. And that brings nothing but uh, hatred upon you with the way Muslims are brought up. So it is not their fault. It's just how <laughs> it's just how people learn to think. And it's it's, it's I don't know, it's, it's upsetting, right? <laughs> it is. It is. So at what point you felt comfortable to come out in public now and begin to talk uh, as someone who left Islam? Um, well, there was a point, I don't know, a few years after I left Islam, I started sharing it around with people around me, only with specific people around me. I was still very careful about uh, sharing it uh, with everybody. After some point, I kind of, uh, I feel like I became a little bit crazy and thought, hey, I don't want to hide anything. I don't have anything to hide. I just want to I'm not going to go out and say it to everybody, but if, if someone asks me, I will just say, hey, I don't believe. And it happened a few times, and I just got very strange reactions from people, even from the most uh, most secular, supposedly secular modern people. Uh, but it, it was in around uh, 2016 that I decided to, um, that I decided to, uh, that I was following um, social media accounts which criticize religion and what I found there as a you know I, I was an I, I became an atheist and what I found there is that the atheist community online mostly consists of simply people who uh, criticize and basically uh, satirize Christianity there is no proper substance no proper uh, content that is about Islam and if there is some content then uh, people usually don't really uh, know very much so I thought I thought I care about this stuff and I would like to uh, go out there and to uh, speak my opinion. And so I started on Instagram first, very, uh, very small. I started sharing, I don't know, jokes, memes and things like that. And eventually I decided, hey, I want to create a YouTube channel because I want to share this stuff. And I don't know, I never thought it would, uh, I would do this for this long, but <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how it started. Did you, I mean, after coming publicly uh, uh, about this, uh, which is, a, uh, by the way, a very courageous move. No one can downplay that at all. Um, any of your friends or relatives, I mean, you don't have to uh, say yes or no, but uh, if you feel comfortable, came forward to you, even private, and say, you know what, I've been thinking this way, and now that you you are speaking about it. Hey, guess what? Let me let me share more of my doubts. You know, did, did, did that yeah. encourage any of them to begin to speak about it? It happened with uh, f a few people. Um, it, it was, uh, I did not do this whole YouTube thing when I was still in Turkey. I wanted to make sure that I get away from Turkey. So uh, I moved to America where I am now. And uh, only then did I start my whole uh, YouTube journey. But after I started this, I was still in contact with certain people that I that I trusted, especially among my relatives. And there were indeed uh, two people who, um, who 
I didn't want to approach them. I didn't want to talk with my relatives at all about this stuff. You know, they know what I'm doing, but in private, I don't want to talk talk with them about this. But uh, two people among them came to me and asked me why I'm doing this and uh, what pushed me to no longer believing in Islam. And when I shared it, and um, especially one of those people, I gave I gave them a book. I gave them the Quran and said, "Can you please just start reading this book?" Uh, start right here at the beginning of uh, Surah Baqarah. You know, the second chapter, the basically the, the the actual beginning of the quran and when they started reading they thought this is this sounds very uh ridiculous it doesn't really sound very <laughs> it doesn't really sound very sophisticated very mature and i said yeah you know you see what i mean you see what i mean you see what i'm talking about so i started showing different parts of the quran and sharing different things and uh that person did indeed agree with me that this religion is just a bunch of nonsense and uh, similar things happened with other people as well. So it it does happen. It's uh, an impact is being made. Yeah. Yeah, I ask this because you know, in 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 our you know uh, part of the world, in our culture, usually somebody is waiting for someone to be the first. You know, before they start, uh, you know, sharing that. You know what? I have the same doubt, and I'm glad you are the first one to at least announce it. So now I'm I'm behind you. I support with that. But even if they can find you in, in uh, uh, basically privately, it's kind of interesting, by the way, if, if I were to go and use Saudi as an example, if, if, I, if I were to go to my mother and say, hey, I became an atheist, she probably will say, oh, may God guide you. It's OK. You know, it's just mm -hmm. a phase you're going through. But the minute they find out, of course, that you accepted Christ, that's a whole different ball game. But it sounded to me from your perspective that just saying I'm an atheist, that was problematic to begin with. Well, um, so the thing is, I told I didn't tell my parents anything at all. As said, uh, they found out. Uh, I, ac I actually shared this story um, online. <laughs> I was uh, supposed to uh, go to Turkey. I was supposed to visit Turkey. Um, I wanted to do that, and uh, the day before I arrived there, my parents found out that I am no longer a Muslim and that I am also online criticizing Islam, and of course that brought with it some big chaos and we had to sit down and talk about uh all of that and it severely uh damaged our relationship it was like i mean i was thinking to myself uh telling them that i would that i left islam will be extremely hurtful to them telling them that i don't believe in anything will uh I don't believe in, in that I'm an atheist will be more hurtful to them. Telling them that I also, on top of that, decided to publicly criticize Islam will devastate them. That's what I thought. And as it happens, they found out all of that at once and it, it didn't uh, end very well. It's just, I mean, our relationship is severely damaged. Um, but I feel like, I think my, uh, my mother would have wanted me to, would have rather wanted me to become a Christian than to become an atheist because in their eyes the christians are uh ignorant idolaters you know but at least they believe in something and uh, <laughs> that's how they would view it yeah. well hold your thought about that uh, i'm gonna visit this question but but if, if you if i were to ask you right now ap tell me few of the passages or the verses or the stories that really were an eye popper for you from the Quran that kind of like sealed the deal for you. It's like, give me a break. I cannot believe something like this is written in here. Can you give us a couple of examples of those? Um, I would I would mostly think of the scientific things. Well, one of the things, uh, one uh, social moral matter was uh, the Quran chapter 4 verse 34 about beating uh, your wives mm -hmm. that made me uh, growing up as uh, growing up in Germany and being totally like uh, equal and good with women I when I read that I thought to myself this 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 is very strange for me to accept uh, but mostly it was um, there were several things. One of them was the whole uh, story of uh, the Hulkarnain going th going through the going to the west and the east and founding the sun set in a, set in a in a muddy spring. I just kept looking at that and I thought to myself, oh, this does not make sense. And I tried to find the the answers to that, and the answers were just not satisfying. Like that this is from a last that this is not from a Allah's perspective. That this is just a metaphor and all that. It just it just did not satisfy me, and it it kept bugging me. Uh, one more thing was uh, it was not a specific verse, but a collection of verses which basically described that the sun is uh, 
you know, running through the sky to a specific stopping point. I just could not reconcile that with what I know about the, the world around us. And one more thing was uh, Allah holding up the sky with pillars that you cannot see. I thought that's, that just, I didn't want to tell myself that that is ridiculous because I thought I, I, I cannot say that. But I just felt very, I felt this deep conflict in my head going on with those verses. Yeah. Right. And, and there, there are, by the way, some uh, mythological things in the past that do represent somehow a figure or Allah or a giant hold in the sky or pillars. Mm -hmm. But so it appears to me that the Quran just borrowed whatever knowledge was out there and pretended that it is divinely inspired. You know, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So you decided, you know, to come forward and you left Islam and... Um, you know, what, what do you focus on now that you're an apostate, now that you are, a, a, I don't know, you call yourself atheist, maybe? Uh, what, what is it that you focus on when it comes to doing your shows? I mean, is are these the areas that you talk about usually? Uh, well, I, I talk about uh, many different aspects. I usually... I uh, generally just want to talk about criticizing uh, Islam. Sometimes I talk about, uh, I don't know, religion, life, philosophy in general. Uh, I mostly want to focus on on Islam because I think, uh, to me, Islam is problematic. I don't have a problem with religion in general. I say this very openly. Uh, I I am technically an atheist in that I don't believe in, in, in a God. I usually don't really use the term atheist. I usually say I'm a post-theist. I'm uh, beyond that. I don't really... Um, care that much about the distinction between theism and atheism. Um, I don't really identify with that stuff. Uh, I am simply myself. I'm a free thinker. And what I want to do with this work that I'm doing online is simply to uh, to critically analyze Islam, because I think that Islam is particularly um, harmful and uh, dangerous, because I think it was personally harmful to me. It... Um, it was severely harmful to the beginning, the middle, and the end of my life. <laughs> it will be with me forever. It is very harmful to others. I know I, I know, and see what it does to others. I see that Muslim apologists go out there presenting a completely uh, corrupt, twisted uh, form of Islam to sell it, and I want to go out and uh, correct them and speak the truth about it. So this is what I'm doing. I focus on uh, the moral aspects of Islam, the hate and the violence that comes from it, the scientific uh, ignorance of it, the ignorance of the Quran, the Quran's ignorance of other religions like Christianity and Judaism, and so on. These are things that I uh, pretty much focus on. Yeah. And, um, you know, what do you think about those uh, westernized Muslim Taoists? You know, you know, you have uh, the uh, Yasser Qadi, you have the Shabir Ali, who speak with confidence, you know, and who present a whole different view of Islam, by the way, than the view that I grew up uh, learning. Uh -huh. do, 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 you know, whatever they're saying, was that something that you grew up hearing that, oh, it's OK, we understand that there are different ways to read the Quran or different ways to interpret it? Or was it like my way in Saudi? There's only one way, and it's a perfectly preserved book, and nothing in there that can lead you into questioning it, and so on and so forth. Well, the issue is uh, the difference with me is that I that I grew up in a mostly um, non-traditional uh, Muslim environment and understanding that uh, nevertheless holds on to some very uh, traditional fundamentalist uh, perspectives and teachings. I. Uh, my family were Sufis, mysticists, who are uh, contrary to these um, to these fundamentalist uh, Salafis and Wahhabis and whatever uh, you may call them. Uh, th there is actually an, a, a hostility between them going on, has been going on forever. Um, but according to the understanding that I always learned when I grew up, uh, we had um, we are supposed to have theological differences, uh, or we have theological differences, uh, like differences of understanding where Allah is, what Allah is, what His shape is, and this and that. But uh, one thing that we are never supposed to do is to uh, is to downplay and change our religion. We are supposed to uh, stick to the truth and uh, preach it openly and speak it openly and practice it openly as it is. Uh, and I learned to uh, to adopt certain beliefs, such as that uh, you know. 
the whole whole thing about women, the whole thing about uh, that the disbelievers are the enemies of Allah and the enemies of Islam and that I'm not to befriend them. I learned this from a very young age, that I'm not supposed to befriend them, that I'm not supposed to be close with them, that I'm not supposed to trust them. And that uh, corruptions of these messages are merely corruptions and are deviations from the true path of Islam. These are things that I learned. So when I now see that certain Islamic apologists and scholars come out and say, well, it's not really like that, then that just directly raises a red flag. And, and I feel like those people are not really following what I thought we should be following. And it looks like they're being sneaky. They are being dishonest about their religion for a specific uh, purpose, for a specific agenda. That is definitely uh, what I see. Um now, uh, when you were growing growing up, uh, did you go to Islamic schools or madrasas or at least a mosque? And uh, were you learning anything about Islam uh, through these sources, or was it just uh, from home and and just from basic, uh, you know, traditional ways of understanding your background and your culture? Uh, I would go to certain gatherings with my family that are uh, that are not directly established schools, but that are um, kind of loosely organized uh sufi groups um and there i would i would hear preachings i would hear certain teachings i would be taught and told uh how to understand and how to live islam i was also sent to a um to, to, a, to a place uh, to the mosque to learn the basics of islam to learn to read the quran and this and that i did not specifically specifically go to an islamic school um uh, I only only later in life, when I myself decided to become more religious, I uh, started going regularly to uh, a specific Sufi school to sit there and to uh, get some intensive education about Islam because I thought to myself that I am too late, that I wasn't religious enough in my youth. I need to learn everything now intensively. So uh, I did that later in life. And that kind of really accelerated my path to leaving Islam, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I, I want to, of course, Seth, uh, you know, welcome everyone who's watching uh, Sneakers Corner. Um, you know, uh, welcome uh, to uh, our show. I don't know if this is Mel or someone else, but uh, uh, we are so thankful, of course, for the work you guys do as well. Um, so, you know, AP, you said some things in the Quran were troubling to you. What about the Hadith? I mean, did you uh, get exposure to the Hadith? Uh, yeah. The, the thing is, I had a very... Um, this gets a little bit complicated. It needs a lot of background. But um, these fundamentalist Muslims or uh, mainstream Sunni Muslims have a more strict understanding of how they uh, read the Hadith and what they classify as authentic and inauthentic or uh, reliable and unreliable. Uh, in the Sufi background, the, the, the Hadith, which you can consider reliable, are much more than just these few Hadith that fundamentalists have. And when I say few, I mean thousands. Uh, with, our, with, with our Sufist background, we had even more hadith that are much more ridiculous, such as dumb hadith that say stuff like that uh, Allah created everything for the just for the sake of Muhammad because he loved Muhammad so much and things like that. So uh, I, gr I grew up with those loving things, with with a certain, uh, you know, lovely aspects of Allah and Muhammad and all that. But then uh, later, of course, when I started studying uh, Islam by myself and started reading the foremost fundamental sources of the hadiths, I immediately find myself looking into a certain hadith which uh, I often bring up nowadays, which are extremely problematic about uh, Muhammad's behavior towards uh, others, about Muhammad's treatment of women, of his child marriage, of his hostilities, of his uh, ludicrous statements about uh, where the sun goes at night and that it goes to prostrate itself under the throne of Allah and asks for permission to rise again in the morning and one day it will not be given permission and then it will go back and rise in the West and things like that. And <laughs> I don't know, there's just the hadith are even more embarrassing than the Quran, I would say. The hadith are even more, uh, even more, even harsher, even more violent and hateful than the Quran, and also uh, to certain extents, even more embarrassing than the Quran. Yeah. Now, where I grew up, Speaking against the Quran or possibly Allah, eh, you know, 50-50, uh, people can still tend to forgive you. But speaking against Muhammad and the Hadith was the most dangerous uh, line you can cross. Is it the same? You know, same even thing. Even though uh, in a Sufi circle, it, was it the same? 
Same thing, yeah. It, 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 it is very strange, right? It's it's very strange how it gets there. But uh, Allah is kind of a matter of uh, you know of of disagreement. Can be a matter of disagreement. Is not so sensitive. But when it comes to Muhammad, if uh, if there is anything offensive against Muhammad, then everyone goes nuts. That uh, was the same thing in our circles. It was Muhammad was our honor, our pride. It cannot be touched. <laughs> it's very weird. It's almost as if uh, Muhammad is. A, a demigod, a lesser god, or as if Muhammad is a god next to Allah, which is very ironic because the Quran accuses other religions of having uh, taken their prophets or their and their priests as gods besides Allah, uh, besides God. But in Islam, you have this sentiment that uh, Muhammad must be protected and must be honored above everything and greeted above and, and greeted all the time. And people go even more crazy about uh, protecting Muhammad than about protecting Allah. It is really strange. <laughs> yeah. it, it is indeed. I mean, uh, I see it even more vivid uh, now uh, than ever before. I mean, growing up, I never thought about these things. I mean, do you have these moments when you reflect back and say, how in the world did I even believe in something like yeah. this? Yeah, same. <laughs> No, I, I had the same thing. I, it's, it's like um, you don't think about those things when you grew up with them because you are indoctrinated indoctrinated to believe a certain way and to and to consider that uh, normal to normalize that. But then when you get out of it and then uh, look back and you see the problem right in front of your eyes, you think, "Wait, how how did that happen? <laughs> and how did I once believe that that is that that is normal? It is really strange." Yeah. Do you mind if we take a quick question here? Our, uh, yeah, sure. you know, one of our friends, uh, Emily Upton, is, is asking you, do you get along better with Christians, atheists or Muslims or it really doesn't matter? Uh, I mean, personally, uh, it doesn't really matter. With, with my whole online thing, of course, it affects all my relationships. Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just fine with uh, atheists and Christians who are the most understanding and the most uh, the kindest usually. Uh, I don't of course of course I don't get very good reactions from Muslims. Unfortunately, I don't know. I have no idea why. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of that, you know. Um... Can you give us uh, an assessment, you know, of what's going on in a Muslim world in terms of just apostasy and leaving Islam? Do you have your hand in a pulse, for instance, in certain areas? I used to follow it more closely in the past, but um, over the last uh, decade, over the last years especially, since... Uh, the world got got a little bit more closer, a little bit closer to each other through through social media and things like that. Uh, there has been a uh, a big rise in people who doubt Islam. In uh, Turkey, I see that uh, pop culture has changed a lot. Uh, it has become quite normal in uh, Turkish uh, popular culture to. Uh, to doubt Islam and to say that you are not a Muslim, that was uh, not really a possibility just 10, 15 years ago, or maybe even five years ago. But it, it is becoming uh, rapidly, rapidly normal to uh, to express doubts and to say, hey, I'm, I don't believe in Islam, I'm an atheist, or I'm this, or I'm that. Uh, an atheist organization has been formed for the first time in Turkey and officially uh, recognized, which is a first ever. Uh, people introduce different religions, people introduce ideas and people discuss other religions. These things are going on and uh, certain religious religious figures, religious authorities are talking about how it is becoming a modern problem that uh, uh, apostasy from Islam is rising among the youth. Atheism and deism are rising. Conversion to different religions, to Christianity and to other religions is rising among the youth. Uh, similarly, there have been a lot of reports from countries like Iran, for example, or even Saudi Arabia. I th I'm sure you have uh, you've seen some reports over the last years where certain people have expressed that there is a dangerous rise of <laughs> of apostasy going on. But there is some big change happening. I feel like uh, the internet, uh, social media, has definitely contributed to uh, a big change in the world of Islam, and it will only get better. I think. What do you attribute this? I mean, yeah, we're seeing large numbers, by the way, in Saudi and even in the MENA area, which is the Middle East and North Africa. I mean, in the hundreds of thousands leaving mm -hmm. Islam, 
Now, that doesn't mean they're coming, by the way, to follow Jesus. That's not what I'm trying to say here. But they are leaving Islam. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? I mean, especially among the end generation. I mean, is it shows like ours, you know, work like David Woods and Sam Shamoon? Is it them searching now and discovering these embarrassing things? What are the factors that lead them to make these courageous decisions, by the way? Well, I, th I think that... Um us and others uh, going out here and speaking and criticizing Islam and uh, offering these perspectives definitely helps. It definitely makes people think. I often see people say, uh, I left Islam because of this and this show, or I left Islam because I listened to this and that person. I receive a lot of emails uh, thanking me and others for uh, for 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 them leaving Islam. But uh, it is not only us. I mean, we are uh, we are one force one drop only one side of this whole thing that is going on there is more to it there is uh the fact that muslims were muslims have been um living in a very uh uninformed way up until now uh now with the spread of uh, mass media with the spread of the internet with the spread of social media people are uh, communicating with other cultures and finding out about their beliefs since islam has such a um, such an exclusivist, uh, restrictive uh, culture and uh, religion. Since Islam uh, tells Muslims to stay among themselves, not to communicate with others, with others not to trust others, not to uh, be with them, uh, it held them in, th in, this, in this box. It kept them there. But people are now finding opportunities to communicate with others and learning more about their cultures, which makes them cur curious about their cultures, which makes them uh, question their own cultures and their own beliefs, which makes them want to be more like others. These things uh, help, definitely. People are... Uh, most Muslims would never read or understand the Quran or the Hadith. They would never know about the life of Muhammad. They are now finding out more about the contents of the Quran and about the history of Muhammad, the history of Islam, and finding out about these things. Just finding out about them, it doesn't even need criticism. Just finding out about them makes Muslims uh, question. It contributes, all of that contributes to people leaving Islam. So. The best thing we can do is to just spread more information, even if we do not uh, criticize, even if we do not necessarily comment. Just spreading information does a lot to uh, people who really need to see it, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll speak about Saudi. Uh, while it's clear that the Sharia law has laws against apostasy and so on and so forth, uh, they, I, I give credit to the Saudi government that they at least they let the family handle the affairs of, of uh, you know, their children leaving Islam and especially mm -hmm. become vocal. Uh, is it the same where you grow up? I mean, uh, or are there really strict laws to where they can arrest you and throw you in jail? Like, for instance, are you allowed to go back home? Well, um, there is currently a thing going on against me. There has been uh, an arrest warrant issued against me in Turkey. Uh, if I enter Turkey, I will be brought to court and have to uh, basically... Uh, explain why I said certain things. Uh, leaving Islam is not a crime in Turkey. It is not punishable. Uh, criticizing Islam is punishable under the guise of... Uh, there is a specific law which is um, publicly, um, publicly insulting uh, the religious beliefs held by uh, a part of the population. That is the law. But the law is never used against people who uh, who criticize other religions or who insult other religions. People do that all the time. I belonged to certain groups that basically uh, dehumanize Jews all the time or that uh, depict Christians as, 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 as liars and demons and this and that. Nothing happens to them. But if you only criticize uh, Islam, if you only say certain things about Muhammad, even if you just present facts, if you just say, uh, Muhammad was morally questionable. He married a child. That can be punishable, and will be uh, you will be called to a court for that. And that is in, indeed the case with me. They are, want me to go to court and to uh, to give a statement just because I published a Turkish video in which I said that uh, that Muhammad is not the is is not this this beloved prophet that we have always learned about, but the prophet did some very questionable things like marrying a child. That is what they quoted, and they want me to go to court for that and possibly be punished with uh, a uh, prison sentence for up to three years or something like that. It's it's ridiculous. Wow, uh, that's that's interesting. And, and that's supposed to be a secular country. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, speaking of that, I mean, it seemed like not just in there, but in, in a lot of parts of the Islamic world, there is this shift now towards, um, uh, you know, more radicalized form of Islam. I mean, are, are you sensing that that's the case? Is it a, a reaction to what's happening? There is. Um, well, the same thing kind of happened uh, in the 20th century, didn't it? I mean, there was a there was a revivalism going on in the Islamic world. Uh, the religious groups, religious people kind of uh, became upset that uh, secularism and westernization has weakened the Muslim world, which is why they wanted to uh, violently or forcibly revive Islam and make everything more religious. Uh, it didn't work out. Now they are blaming it again on secularism and on westernization. Now they're wanting to revive Islam again. Uh, the same thing is happening in Turkey. In Turkey, it's a little bit different because um, Turkey was secularized uh, through the Turkish revolution in the early 20th century. And the secularization brought with it uh, certain laws which uh, closed down uh, religious institutions in Turkey, which banned religious clothing, which basically pushed religion into the background and which uh, which aimed to secularize, to modernize and to westernize Turkey. So uh, the religious part of the population, the religious sentiments were kind of suppressed in Turkey over uh, over. 50 years or more and now those sentiments are slowly regaining their power and uh, the religious part of the population is trying to basically take revenge and trying to impose islam again on the state and on society the issue is that um they are slowly and mildly trying to do this but the more they're the more they're trying to do this the more they are upsetting large parts of the population the more they are pushing younger younger people away from islam the more they are uh making people hostile toward islam this is uh simultaneously going on while the revivalism is happening so as i when i look at it what i see maybe i'm wrong i don't know is that the state is uh trying to go toward uh political islam but the people are the more uh, being pushed away from Islam and the more they want to go toward modernization and secularism. And I would think that the future will be uh, better because of that. I hope I'm not wrong. I don't know. Mm, interesting. Um, what um, what kind of reaction you got uh, by way of uh, uh, Muslim reactions in general? Do you receive threats do you uh, receive any accusations that prompt maybe YouTube and others to harass you and things like that? Yeah. Well, I have been, um, we have been, I've been dealing with bans forever, being banned from this platform, being banned from that platform, being kicked out from this platform, people asking uh, YouTube to ban me, asking Patreon to ban me, asking all these platforms to ban me. Uh, that kind of made me uh, just not post on many of these social platforms anymore. I only post on YouTube. Uh, this is where I am. Uh, but of course, I get, I get these um, terrible communications all the time. It, 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 at the beginnings, they would stress me out a little bit these constant death threats these things like i'm coming for you i will find you i will do this and that to you uh meanwhile i don't even i don't even care anymore it's it's kind of <laughs> it's weird to say it's it's strange and sad that it happens like this but i meanwhile just ignore these violent threats and things that i get i'm like i see someone say i will find you and i will kill you and i'm like yeah whatever yeah i just I don't even look at it anymore. It's it's just it's just I just put it away. I talked to the FBI before about these things. Actually, they found me and uh, they asked me to send them a lot of things. I did, but then at some point I thought, man, I I, I can't send them every communication that I get. You know that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got used to it. I mean, what can you do? <laughs> I hear you. I mean, I I feel for for of course for you because you have a family as well and uh you know sometimes it puts stress on the whole family yeah but i yeah. hope uh, everyone is understanding that you know there isn't really anything that you're doing that uh other than hush bosh talk you know um hopefully that's what it is but uh you have to take it seriously sometimes yeah. um and um you know so so g give me a second here we have uh jojo uh, Jojo 88, I think you need vacation. Uh, remember my uh, magic finger? Here it is. It's at <laughs> work right here. Yep. So he is taking a vacation right now to think about what he says. Um, so let me ask you this question. And, and really don't take it the wrong way. I mean, I'm just, uh, listen, uh, there's a lot of people that love you. 
Um, I'm one of those people that uh, love you, respect you. And, uh, you know, you to me, you're just a courageous person who can Thank even you. come out and, and say uh, things with a with a very open mind. You know, you're not saying anything wrong. I mean, you're just speaking the obvious, but you are representing many, probably many who are, uh, you know, encouraged by your move. But but obviously, I just want to ask, you know, what is stopping AP from taking the next step, for instance, to know about Christ? Not a religion called Christianity, but knowing about Christ. I mean, if you feel comfortable answering this question, please do. If not, sure. don't worry. I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. No, it, it is it is fine. Um, it's, to, it's totally fine to, to ask that question. Uh, I Well, the, the thing is, um, after I left Islam, I didn't immediately stop believing in God altogether. I wasn't entirely sure whether there is a God or not and what I'm supposed to believe in. It took me about a year to uh, decide that I am simply an atheist. But back then, uh, at that time, I think that was, uh, I don't know, 2015 or so. Uh, at that time, I, I just thought, I guess this is what it is. You know, I, I guess there is no God. I guess I don't believe in God. Uh, over the years, I kept um, thinking about it and kept questioning, especially there was one time where there was a certain phase where I was, uh, where I started having major uh, depress de depression and uh, major anxiety attacks. I started having anxiety symptoms, probably uh, caused by um, a lot of things that I, do here and uh, a lot of things that happened in my life and at that in that phase during that phase i even wanted to i even sympathized with christianity and with uh the bible and the the gospels the message of jesus and i wanted to um i thought to myself i wish i could just uh, accept and i could i wish i could just believe so i subjected myself a little bit to um to those to the teachings mm -hmm of Christianity and the teachings of the Gospels and of the Bible. And I read through them and I thought about them. And um, the issue was, in the end, I simply uh, could not find myself believing uh, in it. Most importantly, I could not find myself uh, believing in the idea that there is a God or that there is a specific God, that there is one God who created everything, who will hold us accountable, that we have a responsibility to, uh, and all that, based on many different reasons, such as that, um, very simply said, I, don't, I didn't think there was any reason for us to assume that there is a God. I simply do not see any convincing argument. I don't see any 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 proper evidence. Uh, things like that i don't know i'm i'm still uh, debating this whole idea i'm debating god and christianity with christians and with others uh, as well i've recently started debating uh christians on this issue who have been mostly very very nice uh to me uh i wish i could do the same thing with with muslims but yeah so i thought about it i i tried it but i just cannot believe in it and um Though I have certain disagreements with the teachings and the morals of Christianity, it is mostly just about the fact that I simply am not convinced that it is true. And if I'm not convinced that it is true, if I do not believe in it, if I cannot believe in it, then it would be hypocritical and false of me to uh, to assume a certain religion or a, a certain belief. I mean, that's what I would think. I would be betraying myself. Well, I um, asked this question because I, uh, I mean, I, again, please don't take it the wrong way. I care for your soul and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're uh, someone who uh, can be very valuable in the kingdom um, uh, for the work that you do. Have you ever considered Thomas Aquinas' work on uh, the existence of God? Uh, I have. Yeah, I've, I've looked into it before. I've looked into it many, many different perspectives. I have, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I really, um, I really could not convince myself especially about a certain thing uh which is the problem of the afterlife the problem of hell uh i know there are there are alternatives to the belief in of hell uh alternatives that i do not think are very well substantiated and supported uh scripturally seen uh which just leave uh, hell, and I simply cannot accept the idea of of that as reasonable. I do not see. I don't. I don't think it is uh, just 
it, it's not like a boohoo hell. It is more like I think that the idea of hell or the idea of the afterlife or the idea of judgment in the afterlife, the idea of a temporary life and then the afterlife is simply, in my uh, opinion, inconsistent with the morality of God himself and with the logic of the religion that we are uh, preached about is what I think. And I looked into the uh, theodicis and into the into the possible answers. I could not find a satisfying answer so far. I will go on and debate these ideas uh, for a long time. I like doing it. So, <laughs> but I understand why you're asking. I understand your your good will. It's it's totally fine. Appreciate that. So, what what is AP working on these days? Um. Right now, I've really gotten back to publishing a lot of videos. I've published uh, more videos in the last uh, one week than I than I uh, than I published in the pre previous month. Uh, I'm really getting into this right now. I've, I took a little bit of a, of a break. Was doing a lot of other things. Um, I want to get and get back and get back to publishing. Uh, I don't know two videos every week about criticizing certain aspects of Islam. I'm doing a lot of things with David Wood right now. We will be we will be coming out with uh, certain videos about science and Islam. We will be debating each other about uh, morals and Christianity. Uh, and I'm currently writing a book, uh, which is supposed to be a comprehensive, long, uh, thorough, critical analysis and refutation of the religion of Islam. I'm very excited about that. That's one of the major things that I'm currently working on. Yeah, that's cool. I'm I'm asking because I would love really to invite you to do um, professional video series with us as well. Um, I would love to. Would obviously love to. Uh, related to Islam uh, in this case, a a all aspects, whether science and other things like that. So we need to uh, really talk about that and see if your schedule permits. Uh, obviously, I would love that. I love that. I would love that. Yeah, it's an honor. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you. Let me, uh, if, if anyone has any more questions, by the way, I did see questions that tend to be political. I'm not going to put you in that position, brother. Uh, and also, I refuse to get into politics. This is not about politics. This is just about, you know, uh, two men talking about their spiritual journey. And we want to keep it that way. We don't want to jeopardize your safety, my safety, the safety of your family. You're already under a lot of stress and pressure from that aspect. So we need to uh, not to add to that. And I appreciate the questioner's understanding of why we did not really touch some of those questions. If there is any more questions for AP while we have him in here, meaningful questions based on what you've heard or based on what you know about him, please go ahead and ask uh, these questions right now. Uh, while they're doing that, uh, you know, recently you and uh, David uh, have been doing kind of like a, uh, a debate, if you wish, I mean, people sometimes take it seriously and they send me notes. It's like, what's going on between the two of them? I'm like, <laughs> guys, you know, please, you know, they're just doing something educational here. That's what's going on. Yeah, David and I have a have a nice way of communicating with each other. <laughs> we we uh, engage in serious discussions, but uh, at the same time, we uh, I don't know, mock each other uh, jokingly, kind of. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, supposedly humiliate each other because we're trying to really kind of uh, imitate those who do those those things to us from the islamic camp uh it, it is all it is all fun it's all it's all good it's all uh, enjoyable to us but um so while joking uh, about finishing and destroying each other and uh, all that uh, david and i are currently basically um debating whether morality uh or moral obligations come from God or whether they are uh, natural or whether they are man-made. And that is basically the, the debate that we are having with David right now. We are having this back and forth. I'm waiting for him to respond. He's probably scared uh, to respond. And yeah, that, that, that that's what we are, we are doing. David is, uh, I have a good relationship with David going on. We have, uh, we, we do good work together. Uh, I like his stuff a lot. So we will be doing a lot of great stuff in the future. People shouldn't be surprised when we sometimes uh, seemingly attack each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I understand it, but sometimes people, for some reason, panic, you know. So we have a William yeah. Lynn, not William Lynn Craig, okay? 
uh, it could be William Lane Craig, I'm just hiding the, the last name, is saying, does AP believe in the existence of evil, now that you mentioned morality and things like that? What, 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 are, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, very complicated, very deep, very long topic. If I, if I say something, when I say something, it's usually taken the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe I need to find a better way to explain it. But uh, what, what, I, what I would say is um, that the concept of evil itself is a... Uh, human construct made by humans to define and to explain certain things which they consider uh, harmful to themselves or to others in a certain way based on uh, specific understanding, specific goals that they have. Uh, so in so far, I don't think that there is uh, a certain objective evil in the world. I merely think, I also don't think that there is an, an objective good in the world. There are just certain things that humans perceive as good or perceive as bad based on uh, social situations based on their own uh, needs and their surroundings uh, and based on that people uh, establish certain constructs like good and evil and when I say that I don't mean that good and evil are uh, human constructs and therefore uh, unnecessary or meaningless what I'm saying is they make these uh, human constructs for a reason they are useful they are good that's basically what I think but needs much more elaboration I said no problem. No problem. Uh, someone asked, you know, if you were to list uh, the top one or two reasons, if you were to ask a Muslim to consider leaving Islam or or ask a Muslim to consider exploring these things, what are the top one or two things you think that should be an eye opener for a Muslim, for instance? Um well, I think one of the things that needs to be brought up to Muslims, which people do not bring up enough, is uh, the historicity of the Kaaba, because I think we're not talking about it enough, but uh, the Kaaba should be a a deal breaker. It should be like, it should destroy Islam's legitimacy because the Kaaba is the whole uh, story about how the Kaaba is the house of Allah and how it was established by Abraham and all that nonsense is completely unfounded and is uh, very easily debunked. If we want to trust evidence, then the vast majority of evidence points at the uh, at the fact that the Kaaba was simply a pagan temple which was only adopted by this uh, syncretic Islamic belief which Muhammad himself established because he didn't know anything else. And uh, we're bringing up the Kaaba and going into the history of it and into uh, different sources of it uh, should really raise certain questions. I see that it does raise questions with Muslims. One other thing is, uh, this is very specific, but uh, the Quran has a bad misunderstanding of um, the two Marys, <laughs> the Mary, mother of Jesus, and uh, prophetess Miriam. It uh, confuses them as one and the same person. And that I think should be deeper explored. And uh, it, it really reveals that the Quran has no idea what it's talking about. And uh, one other thing as always is science in the Quran. There is an abundance of scientific uh, errors, embarrassing scientific errors in the Quran. Yeah, those are the three that I would mention. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, of course, you mentioned uh, uh, very important reasons, undoubtedly. Uh, someone was asking, have you ever read the Bible while you're a Muslim or even after leaving Islam? I have. Um, I have indeed. I did indeed, indeed read um, the Bible. I wanted to start uh, kind of chronologically. I started with the Old Testament. I started reading Genesis after I left Islam. I think, uh, I don't know, maybe I started with it when I was still a Muslim or when I was questioning but I remember reading it uh, back then or having a Bible and uh, beginning to read it after I left Islam even more. And then I realized I had this <laughs> realization, uh, thought, wait, this is nothing like what we as Muslims learned. This is, this is nothing like that, li like what we thought the Bible is. And it is, it, it is completely, there's, there's a great disconnection, discrepancy between how this book tells things and how the Quran talks to us. Uh, I, I only read bits of it. Much later, I read uh, the, the Gospels, bits of the New Testament. I never read the Bible entirely through, but I just read uh, parts of it. I read Ecclesiastes recently, which I, uh, I find is a very, uh, a very nice book in the bible i think it's it's so far my favorite 
Well, but, you didn't you didn't read in Ecclesiastes, for instance, that uh, Solomon's uh, talk to ants, right? You know, scientifically speaking. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that was an interesting. I mean, I've always, you know, read that story, and I was like, "Wow, how does he talk to ants? Wow, that's <laughs> fascinating!" You know, <laughs> so. there, there are such weird things that we are taught told about in the in the in the Quran, uh, and. The, the, the funny thing is when you uh, are brought up with these teachings that come from the Quran about biblical characters, about Abrahamic characters, you are made to think that uh, that these are normal things that Christians and Jews believe in as well. And then when you go out of that and you start understanding what Christians and Jews believe in, you realize that it's not true. Christians and Jews don't believe in all these ridiculous things. They, they These are not these are just Islamic stories that, that Islam gave us. It's really strange. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you have a message from uh, Almir here. I don't know if uh, he wrote it maybe in oh. um, in Turkish. You know. Yeah. But um, uh, Almir is a is a is a dear brother. Also, he's not that far from uh, your former nation, by the way. That's uh, where he comes from, uh, part of Central Asia, and he's a believer in Christ. Also, an ex-Muslim. I want to thank him for his uh, super chat. Thank you to everyone, by the way, for your super chat. Sometimes it's hard for me. By the time I get to your super chat, uh, folks, it will be done. Uh, uh, so uh, I can't really find it after that. So I know the team always is uh, making an effort to reference that. Someone was also asking, um, do you sense like maybe uh, your parents slowly and gradually might soften their stance against you? Or do you feel like this is a hard line that you cross the line with them and they're really not going to change their mind now? Well, um, I don't know how much I want to talk about that, but um, no, no, we don't want to put you in a tough position, my friend. I mean, I just oh, it's to, it's, it's like I mean, it 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 definitely severely harmed our uh, damaged our relationship. I still have uh, I still talk to my mother, and um, she was understanding in a certain way. I mean, she was very, very, very upset. She is still very upset. I realize whenever I talk to her, he just she just sounds. Uh, different very there's just this sadness in her voice uh it's it's almost like i died or something like that but she told me she will just uh love me as her son no matter what although she severely disagrees with these things sometimes she wants to talk to me but she doesn't uh with my father it's very different um i think it's i don't i don't know if he will ever uh accept this whole new rea no, new reality but so far it hasn't been uh, he has not uh, accepted it he hasn't really dealt with it well at all i think i think i did i i've i, I didn't even talk to him ever since the last time since he found out that i left us now and it's, mm -hmm. it's been like two years or so yeah it is tough my friend uh, yeah. i can yeah. i can relate to some of these uh you know i can see the hurt in, in your voice and i'm sorry i didn't mean to yeah. put you in no it's, it's okay it's because, okay but uh <laughs> Um, let me let me ask another question. You know, what do you think is the reason why Muslims just get irritated? Uh, you know, uh, if you're communicating things, I mean, even if they're culturally Muslim, even if they don't even know half of what you're trying to share with them about Islam, why do you think they just react this way? Is it just out of fear that someone else will find out that they're doubting like you, or do they really mean their attacks against you? Well, uh, on one hand, they have this, uh, they perceive this duty that they have this, uh, this, this, uh, they have to defend the, the honor of their belief of, of Islam and the honor of the Muslim community and the honor of Muhammad and Allah and the Quran. Uh, they perceive this uh, childish, ridiculous duty that they have to do this. That's what makes them uh, angry. I, I felt the same thing when I was a Muslim. I felt like uh, when somebody was uh, offending Islam or saying something about uh, Allah and Muhammad, I felt like I have to step in and I have to save the honor of Islam. It's so it's so dumb when I think about it now. <laughs> but I think uh, that is definitely one major uh, motivator. But uh, they're also very much afraid of doubts. And uh, you know, as a Muslim, you grew up you grew up fearing the idea of doubts the idea of thinking differently and when you uh poke them with doubts it causes uh severe distress which makes them not react very well it's unfortunate yeah. indeed indeed my friend um well we will definitely lift you up in our prayers as always um 
uh, you are nevertheless a warrior out there who is speaking out against a force that unfortunately does not believe in openness or freedom. We all know yeah. that. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to uh, future collaborations together here in live streams and also doing professional, you know, uh, videos in our studios, which we will talk about. And I would uh, love to so arrange something like that. Any last thoughts, uh, any last words you have to Muslims who will be watching this undoubtedly? Uh, thanks, first off, uh, so much. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Fadi, for inviting me. Uh, I just want to say... Um, one certain thing, which is that um, when, when we disagree with each other, especially to Muslims, when we disagree with each other and when we criticize each other's beliefs and analyze each other's beliefs. And in this case, I want to pay attention to the fact that I am merely crit criticizing my own former belief, not someone else's belief. When we uh, have these disagreements, then uh, it may look like we hate each other. It may look like we have to hate each other and have to attack each other and have to uh, be brutally hostile with each other, but that's not really the way. That's not how it is supposed to be. There is no harm. There should be no harm in uh, coming together and talking about our differences and solving them properly without trying to uh, humiliate and destroy or otherwise uh, cause damage and harm to each other. I think it would be fantastic if we could simply sit down and talk about our differences. I have no reason to hate Muslims. I know many Muslims that I love very much, including my own parents and uh, people from my past. I have no reason to hate them. I do not hate them. I understand where they are coming from. I think they are greatly mistaken with their beliefs and with their attitudes. I would uh, like to change them. I would like to show them uh, a different way to think and a different way to, to live. I think it would be in their best interest and in the best interest of everyone, including of me, and uh, of all humanity. Hating is not the way. You don't have to hate me. I don't have to hate you. Let's just sit down and have uh, conversations. And it is also not bad to have doubts. If Allah created us, uh, according to the Islamic belief, if Allah created us and if he gave us the capability to doubt and to think, then there shouldn't be a problem with uh, allowing ourselves to think and to doubt that's all i want to say and thanks and stay away from islam as i always say <laughs> uh, good advice uh thank you so much uh for that uh, folks uh, sam shamon will go live uh, in about an hour 45 minutes from now which will be 7 p.m eastern time and uh what is he going to talk about you go and find out for yourself and uh be behave because he can block you and and sam wanted to be like an admin on my uh channel i told him are you crazy you're gonna block me myself from my channel if I make <laughs> that. Uh, but uh, we had a wonderful uh, session last night and it was amazing uh bless you uh folks uh and bless sam bless uh, david bless you uh we pray for you brother you know uh we want you to um, you know finish the journey <laughs> so uh we're hopeful that that will happen um we're looking Sam, Sam to take care of the of the saints of sam by the way should be careful about the, the saints of sam should tell them to, to calm down uh, oh the saints of sam <laughs> okay yeah i've been seeing that sos i mean i i really don't, don't know what exactly is going on there but <laughs> yeah he knows yeah, yeah wonderful all right my friend well thank you so much thank you everyone for being here thank you to our amazing moderators and i, I will be remiss if i don't thank sister netta for uh, arranging for this uh it's it's been really definitely quite a journey and we're thankful that we finally found the time to do this and hopefully this is the beginning of many uh, you know, I, I, it's my dream really to have you and David even here together uh, as a panel discussion. So uh, we'll work on that. You know, once I put my mind on something, I'll I'll do whatever it takes to get it done. So we'll see. Uh, I'm praying that David I'm will excited. respond to my text messages now. So he has. A <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it I hope seems so. like he's busy. He's definitely. He, busy. he always says, yeah, he's sometimes he's very hard to reach, very hard to respond. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. This is Al Fadi over and out. God bless. Take care.